Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you everything that I currently have in my four propagation boxes. Plus I'm going to be removing some plants just to make room for others. And then closer to the end of the video, I'm going to be setting up another perlite prop box. So I'll kind of run you through the process with that. So let's get started. Right off the start, I have three perlite prop boxes and one sphagnum moss. I prefer the perlite propagation method not only for its really high success rate for me, I think I've only ever had maybe like one or two different types of plants that have not rooted in uh, perlite. One of them just happens to be in the moss here which I'll show you in a little bit. Not only does it have a really high success rate for rooting many different types of plants, Perlite typically doesn't have a tough transition period when you pot these up in soil compared to say water. Sometimes water roots have a little bit of a difficult transition when you pot them up in a heavy medium like soil. Now sphagnum moss is probably pretty comparable to perlite when you plant it or pot it up in soil. I personally don't like moss just because the roots get tangled up in the moss and sometimes it can be a little difficult to remove the moss without damaging the plant. I love water propagated plants like this Monster Deliciosa. I'm growing this in water. Water. those roots are super satisfying like look at those big chunky things uh, the water is a little bit grimy right now I'm going to have to uh, change it out but I may do a video on this in the near future so stay tuned I'm gonna start off with this little alocasia corn box I did have them in kind of like a grid pattern with these labels so I have the aurea I have two aureas in there I have the silver dragon and yeah these were the grid ones um, I do have the dragon scale and uh, regal shield. So the reason why it's all messed up is because Oscar bumped into the box and it kind of destroyed my little grid setup. So I really don't know which uh, corms these are except for the ones that are obviously um, sprouted here. So this is a little tiny regal shield. Let's see if I can pull this out. Ooh, it's got some nice roots. Okay, I'm not, well, I was going to say, I'm not going to disturb these too much, but I just kind of disturb them all. So this is what they look like. It has a little bulb. It's got the roots. They grow down into the perlite and it roots wonderfully in here. Now I'm thinking this one right here might be the Alocasia gagiana aurea. I'm just going to pull this out. I don't want to rip this root. And I just ripped it. Shoot. I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to put this back in the box. So that's what not to do, folks. I'm just going to leave the rest. Okay, I'm actually really upset by that. Everything else is growing really nice. This is, I believe, a uh, dragon scale. Not too sure what this one is yet until it opens up, but everything is growing really nice. I'm just going to leave the rest. Here is a couple uh, Ripsalis cuttings um, that are currently rooted here as well. I'm just going to not disturb those. I might have to just break up the perlite a little bit better so that I can pull these out. So, yeah. He's got some nice roots here as well. Now I do have a bunch of alocasia corms in this perlite prop box here. I'm going to remove the outer casing on this one because it's not sprouting, but you can see it's still quite firm. So this one has been in here for a long time. I don't even know what this one is. I'm gonna show you how to maybe speed up the process if you have a corm that isn't um, getting roots. So all you need to do is just take the corm and just use your fingernail just to kind of peel away at the outer casing until you reach a green layer. Just peel away as much as you can. It's like a, like a stinky little onion. So normally the roots grow from like this area right here, kind of along the top. The new growth will pop out from the top and all I do is just stick it in the perlite, just like that. I just moved over the rest of the corms from this box into this one. This one looks like a dragon scale. This one is probably the silver dragon. And I got a couple more over here. So now I'm just going to put the lid back on this box so they don't dry out. And now let's move over to this one right here. I'm going to start off with this large leaf one right here. This one is a stem cutting from an Anthurium aquarium lens. Uh, you can see it has a new growth point. It's got one nice root. I think I'm going to be taking this one out of the prop box and potting it in uh, the kind of the original pot. This one here I do believe is the Epiprenum Baltic Blue and then I have some more Epiprenum Panatum. This is the Yellow Flame. I got uh, one stem, I chopped up all the nodes and I propagated them here. This is the only one that has a little bit of variegation. These are just more Baltic Blues. Down here I have a whole bunch of Philodendron Milano Chrysum, uh, little wet sticks. 
So those have some roots. These ones are a little bit further along. There's uh, two different stages. Um, these ones obviously have leaves and all these cuttings down here or these wet sticks. Um, yeah, I just put them in, I think last week. So I should have a whole bunch of Melanochrysum. Um, here is the end of that stem. And this one doesn't have roots yet. This is my, this is a fillet, whoops, this is a philodendron in Tahiti, which I propagated last week. Um, looks like maybe a small little growth point starting right there. So this is what I have currently in this propagation box. So I'll come back to the anthurium here shortly. Let's check out the rest. Now for this prop box, this is a philodendron fuzzy petiole. This is a propagated wet stick. I'm just gonna loosen up the perlite because I don't wanna, again, rip the roots like I did with the last one. Beautiful, beautiful plant. And you can see there is the growth point right there. It's got a fairly large root system. So this definitely can be potted up in some soil. I'm gonna set this aside. I do have a few little seedlings, anthurium seedlings. I can't remember which variety they are. Here's another alocasia corm. Um, here is another anthurium. This plant, I have no idea what it is. It's been in here for probably like a year. I have no idea what it is. But yeah, it is a philodendron of some sort. This is a Hoya. Um, I can't remember which one it is. But look at the roots on here. You can see there's some perlite on the roots. When I pot these up in soil, I don't remove the perlite. Perlite's not like sphagnum moss, like it doesn't hold a ton of water, maybe a little bit, but uh, not enough for it's going to, I guess, maybe potentially long-term rot the roots. The Hoya roots are very thin, so that's why I like using um, perlite to propagate these guys. I don't want to tear the roots when I'm uh, removing the sphagnum moss. I believe these cuttings right here are the Syngonium Chia Pens. I can't remember what they are, to be honest. And then I have a little uh, Philodendron Silver Sword a couple of them actually, that have uh, propagated by wet sticks. It's got some nice, beautiful leaves. Okay, now for the one and only moss box. And the plant that I could not root any other method is the philodendron golden goddess. It was actually from a viewer that suggested putting it in sphagnum moss. I know sphagnum moss is a really good uh, rooting medium, but like I said, See, like it's all stuck together. Uh, I'm gonna have to dismantle these. Currently I have the Golden Goddess, which you can see it has quite significant growth. I'm absolutely loving it. And then here is the Monstera Celtipicana. And then down here, um, I'm not too sure what these are. If it's the Chia Pens or if it's the Raffida for uh, Decursiva, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I'm just leaving those in there. They haven't, ooh, here's a rotten one. Yeah, that one's going in the trash. Um, but overall, you can see it's gotten a lot of new growth. So I'm really happy with how the moss box has performed. Let's see if I can get one of these golden goddesses out. Okay, a little wet stick. It's got some nice roots, but you can see all that moss is just stuck to the roots. And here's a new little growth point. So I have multiple cuttings of the golden goddess in here, which I want to pot up together uh, at some point for a project. But for right now, I'm just leaving all of these grow kind of like a little jungle setting. Here's a cute little Siltipicana new leaf. But uh, overall, I'm happy. I really like sphagnum moss, um, but it's really difficult to remove it from the roots. So yeah, I think this looks cool. Little, little jungle box. You know what, I might actually just leave these in here long term just to see what they do. I may remove a couple of these cuttings, like the Golden Goddess, but for the most part, like I don't need, I don't need these cuttings. I just cut them up to kind of experiment. So let me know what you think I should do with this prop box. Should I leave it long term just to see how crazy it gets? But okay, hopefully you didn't mind my rambling on about all my different propagations. Um, I hope you've made it to this point of the video. Here is the Anthurium Quermolens mother plant. I did buy this one from North Shore Tropicals and it came with a fairly large stem. The leaves, um, it had a little bit of a tough transition when I brought it downstairs into my house. They looked uh, kind of crispy like this and any new leaf that I got would get, uh, oh, my seat keeps uh, banging. I still haven't fixed my seat. I lost the screw a little while ago, so. Uh, but anyways, back to this. Any new leaf that I would get, it would come out very deformed. So I chopped 
the plant up. So here is where I made the uh, cut and it did produce a side shoot um, and it did put out one kind of deformed leaf. This one, beautiful. It's got a little bit of defect right there, but for the most part, I've been paying a little bit more attention to how often I'm watering this. I think I was letting it get uh, too dry before. Oh, here's a root popping out. Just gonna pull that out. That may have been a good root, whoops. Um, it's a white root, but. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be placing the propagated cutting in the same pot. That way I can get maybe a nice full pot of these Quarima lens. Um, so yeah, that is the plan. But yeah, for the most part, I'm really happy with the newest leaf. This thing gets absolutely massive. Um, so yeah, I hope I can achieve that mat uh, mature leaf um, at some point. I'm gonna take this one out of the prop box here and I'm just gonna look at the root. So it doesn't have a large root. I think I should be able to make a small little divot in the pot and then I can accommodate this root. So I'm going to be planting it with the stump kind of horizontal like this and the new growth point will just uh, continue to grow vertically. So I think I'm going to plant it right here. So I'm gonna dig out a little bit of soil here. I just have a little root rake. I'm gonna use the kind of butt end just to see if I can loosen up some of the soil here. Now I don't want to take the plant out of the pot because I don't wanna disturb the mother plant too much. I'm just going to remove a little bit of the soil just at the top here. There are some roots kind of poking through, which I don't like. You want roots to grow downwards instead of up. So sometimes they can stay at the soil level when you're not watering it thoroughly enough. So I made a small little space to accommodate the new cutting right there. Just gonna dig this root down just a little bit so it can grow down. And then I'm going to cover it with soil. So that's as far as I'm going to place the cutting. Just right there, maybe even bring it up a little bit and then I can just re-add the soil around it. I may have to just make sure that root stays down, kind of popped up. I have a little soil tray underneath here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of soil just on top, just to cover it up, just like that. And now I have the two cuttings in the pot. So now I have to keep an eye on this cutting because it came from a very high moisture, high humidity environment like the Perlite Prop Box and I'm bringing it out to just open air. Thankfully, downstairs, my basement is now 66% room air humidity. I do not have any of my humidifiers going right now. I do have another one down there. Um, we've been getting a lot of rain here lately so it's very humid, hot and humid right now. So I don't have to worry about running any humidifiers. So yeah, 66% is good, but it's not going to compare to the Perlite Prop Box. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this one just to make sure that it doesn't start to shrivel up or kind of get crispy. So uh, keep it well watered and don't let it dry out. I just noticed something really cool here. Uh, so this plant is on the floor uh, right near my jade plant. And look what I found in the soil, a little jade leaf. It's pretty much shriveled up but it has roots. So this is a perfect example of how you don't have to do anything to get a J plant to root. Like it was literally just sitting on the soil like that. They root themselves by using all their moisture and nutrients from the, the leaf itself. You can see there's actually a little growth point. It's getting some new little leaves. So you literally don't need to do anything to propagate a jade. You just literally stick it in soil like that. Um, don't do anything and it will grow roots and it'll grow into a new plant. So I'm gonna stick this back in the J plant soil and hopefully I can get a new stem. I think I'm going to remove all the Epipranum panatum yellow flames out of the prop, uh, prop box. Look at this root. This thing is crazy long. Um, here is the mother plant. So I did chop the top off there. It has sprouted a new growth point. So I'm gonna put this one down there and then I'm just going to remove the rest of the cuttings here. Holy cow, these roots. Okay, these should have been taken out a long time ago. Good Lord. Okay, now I'm gonna put these cuttings all back. Here's one more. And this one here. Okay, look at, holy smokes. 
Okay, got a few cuttings. Now I'm gonna bury this Tahiti back. Okay, so for all these little cuttings, I'm going to be placing them in a very small terracotta pot on a plank, and I'm gonna be doing a little bit of an experiment. Um, I just decided, just literally right now, I just decided. I'm going to place the plank in the middle of the pot, like this. Normally, I place it at the very back, um, and then I have all the cuttings growing on one side. I'm going to try, just to see what happens, I'm gonna see if I can grow cuttings on both sides. So I'm going to place this directly in the center of the pot, and then I'm going to add uh, some soil just at the bottom on both sides, just to help stabilize it. And then I can place the cuttings on both sides and see what happens. This root system, it's ridiculous. Like, look how large. So I might cut this back a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna take the smaller root like that, cut this one back. And yeah, let's take this one out of the pot, get this out of the way. and see the root system on this one. Okay, so pretty nice roots for this one. Uh, definitely had some root rot, so lost some roots on this one. But it's got some nice, healthy roots coming in again. So I know I let this one get uh, way too dry a number of times. So that's most likely the cause of the root rot. The way I like to take the cuttings is you can see there are some aerial roots right here. These are what I want to come in contact with the plank. So there's a, uh, the back portion, you can see there's a new aerial root uh, just forming or developing. There's like a little bump. That is what I want in contact with the plank. I'm just cutting off the old portion of the stem here that's sticking out. So um, this is the front. All the leaves grow in kind of alternating patterns. So one on the uh, left, one on the right, and it just kind of shingles up like that. So this is the back, and I'm going to place this right down in the soil. Okay, here's another root. I'm gonna cut this large one off. It doesn't matter if you like actually bury the cuttings because it will find its way to the surface. So I'm not worried about covering them up. I just want them to be, to be positioned properly. So there's the back. And now I'm just putting these ones in the soil. Okay, that one. This one I want upright, like that. And now I'm just gonna put soil right on top. And I believe I forgot, oh, my pencil's right here. And I'm just going to poke down the soil around the roots, just making sure that they are positioned properly. Once I water it, then I can push down these cuttings a little bit better into the soil. Okay, now I'm just gonna stuff these guys in on the side, or on the back, same thing. Uh, this root, I'm gonna chop huge roots on these. So, actually I'm gonna cut this one right back. I'm not worried about cutting these roots because uh, pothos, apropretum, all these plants, they're super resilient. Oh, here's a gross root, rotted part. And then the last one, same thing. I'm just gonna cut the roots off. Okay, so it definitely looks better, all uh, cleaned up and well watered. There's a couple little roots there uh, poking through the soil I'm gonna have to cover up. Uh, but here's the one side with the mother plant and the two cuttings. And then on the flip side, we have the three smaller cuttings. So I think this is gonna be a cool little project. I'm gonna put it down on the floor underneath my grow lights just to see how these grow. At some point, I'm probably gonna to have to attach them using uh, plant Velcro or plant wire. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this little project. Now for the Perlite Prop Box segment, I bought this uh, Tupperware container from the dollar store for a dollar. You just wanna make sure that you have a clear lid as well. This is the Perlite that I use. It is Dutch Treat. Uh, this is 25 liters. It's a huge bag. And I like this stuff because it is really, chunky stuff, like look at that, big chunks of perlite. Probably one of the most important things when using perlite is to use a mask. You do not wanna breathe in the perlite dust. It's just like dust in general. So just pop on um, one of these masks and you should be good to go. 
I just have my perlite bag down here. Look at how chunky that stuff is. So I'm just gonna scoop up the dry perlite like this, and I'm going to fill the container so it's about a third perlite. So that's all I'm gonna add into the prop box. Now the next step is to soak the perlite. And the reason why I'm doing that is for two reasons. I wanna rinse out all those very fine kind of dust particles. I don't want it sitting at the bottom. And then the second reason is obviously you want the perlite to uh, remain saturated. You cannot root a plant in dry perlite. So I'm just going to dump in the water so that it basically reaches the top of the perlite so it's kind of floating like this. So something like that. You can see all the perlite dust at the bottom. So now I'm going to drain the water out of the prop box. Find a container where you can drain the water into. Do not put this stuff down the drain. You shouldn't really do like any sort of plant chores in the sink or anything like that because uh, perlite, all the dirt and stuff, um, yeah, it just clogs your drain. So. Um, I loosen the lid like this, and then I just strain it out. Strain out the water, keeping the perlite in the box. Now the key to this method is to keeping the perlite uh, moist or damp at all times, but not to have any standing water at the bottom. So I'm going to completely drain the water. Now you can see it's kind of a clumpy paste, I guess. So this is ready to receive cuttings. So this is exactly what you want. And you can see there is no standing water at the bottom. Now the way you can check to see if perlite is uh, damp or dry, you can just take a piece like this, squish it, and you should be able to see moisture on your finger. If it's dry and dusty, then your perlite prop box needs to be kind of like rehydrated. Now for my perlite prop boxes, I do not uh, put any holes in the lid. I simply just seal it up and place it in a bright sunny area. Or if you have grow lights, they do uh, really well under grow lights as well. Now when it comes to maintenance of the pot or of the box, um, you may not know when to water it, but you can see on the top, and the sides, there is condensation buildup. So if there is little water droplets on the top or the sides, most likely the perlite is still wet and it does not need to be watered. Now I will open these up maybe for a few minutes, uh, like once a week or once every two weeks, just to check on the cuttings. And then I seal them up again, like that. Now it should be good like this for a number of months, unless you're like me. When I first started out, I opened these every day just to take a peek at the roots. Every time you open it up, obviously the moisture and humidity evaporates. And the, off, the more often that you do it, uh, the drier or the faster it's gonna dry out. If you notice that your perlite is dry, I do not water with a watering can. I will use my misting spray bottle. I will open it up and then I will just spray the tops of the plants down. Again, you don't want any standing water in the bottom of the pot. That can lead to kind of that root rot issue. Um, otherwise, just kind of rehydrate the perlite just by using a misting bottle, just like that. Now, before I seal this up, I should talk about fertilizer. When I set the prop box up, I do not add any nutrients. There's no fertilizer. It's just simply filtered tap water. After a number of months and when you notice the perlite starting to get a little bit dry and you have to rehydrate the perlite, I use my garden spray bottle and in here, for whoops, I'm dumping over the plant. Um, for every watering, I use uh, fertilizer. I use Dynago Foliage Pro. I just use a very small amount of fertilizer and then I just water the prop box. So I use these to water my plants as well. I also add a solution called pH down. My tap water has a pH of eight. So that is very alkaline. Most houseplants need an acidic soil to aid in the uptake of nutrients. So that's why I add the pH down, which lowers the pH of my tap water. Now the last part of the video is I have this philodendron splendid, which it was growing on one of those DIY uh, moss poles. It didn't really work out for me. I uh, propagated it um, onto another uh, plastic moss pole. So I'm gonna take these cuttings, put them in my perlite prop box and see if I can get entirely new plants. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes. So I should get uh, seven new individual plants off of this one uh, stem here. And that's all I do. Um, this one is a leafless node like that. I'm just going to put this in the corner of the prop box. 
And for now, I'm going to uh, keep the leaves on this one just to help with uh, some photosynthesis. Same thing, I'm just gonna cut these all up. Cutting in between the nodes, like so. So here's where I propagated the top part and it's already pushing out a new side growth. Whenever I cut up philodendrons, they have a very sweet fragrance. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or not, but I'm just burying these nodes. It smells like very fresh, fresh grass. It's gonna shorten up these nodes a little bit and push them down. I'm gonna try and keep these, see if I can stuff them all in the box here. I just place them slightly under the perlite and I try not to have the leaves come in contact with the sides of the container. As you noticed, all the condensation on the sides and the top, if the leaves come in contact with that and stay wet, they have a chance to rot. It's not gonna really affect like the, the node, the cutting, but you, uh, you might just get a little bit of a, a rotting leaf, which you can just cut off afterwards, but not a big deal. I just like, that's why I got this kind of deeper container because um, I knew these cuttings uh, were gonna be a little bit larger in there. So, okay, I got all of the cuttings in there. Now I'm going to seal up the box. And here is my Philodendron Splendid Prop Box. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Thanks for watching my videos and thank you to all the new subscribers and viewers. Welcome to the channel. Uh, take care everyone, bye.